Yeah. Yeah, good. Okay, thanks. Um, is this on? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if it's on. No, it's not. Oh, no, it's coming. Okay, great. Okay, so welcome to my uh, presentation. Um, I'll just, uh, I'm sorry for the slides. I don't get to set the resolution right. But um, I'll just give you, in the beginning, a short overview um, of the presentation. I'll very short just introduce myself and, and Camp to Camp, the company I'm working for. Um, and then I'll give you uh, some introduction about Mapfish, about the framework, um, its architecture, and the second release. And then, in particular, I will go into one of the implementations which is a full-fledged uh, web GIS, um, known as C2C Geo Portal, and uh, I'll, I'll show you some other examples. Um, yeah, just uh, some ideas about it, and uh, I'll talk about upcoming developments and give uh, an outlook. So, Camp to Camp, we are an open source solution provider f of about 45 um, from Lausanne, Switzerland, and we have also uh, some uh, one part is in Chambéry, France, and in Vienna. Um, we are working um, in the geospatial domain, but also in, in business ERP systems, in infrastructure um, for system administration, and doing implementation, a lot of implementation, a lot of consulting, support, and training in that domain. So. What is Mapfish? Um, I don't know if you heard about Mapfish before. Who, di who did before? Okay, still some, so you know a little bit. So um, at least, so Mapfish is a web GIS framework. It's uh, component-based, so uh, there are on the server-side components in, in Python or Pyramid Python, um, in, in Ruby and PHP. Java and so on, other libraries, GRL, Comet, Shapely, Itex, etc. And on the on the client side, there's a GRX component um, with OpenLayer and XJS. And it is open source, um, an official OS Geo project. Um, yeah. So uh, the architecture, as I said, there was like uh, there's a client part with with XJS. XJS and open layers. Um, it's communicating with the server via a Mapfish REST protocol, which is JSON based. Uh, and well, on, on in parallel to the in parallel to the OGC protocols. <coughs> and on the server side, we have those different components in Python, PHP, etc. So the second release. Uh, it's, uh, there's a demo on, on mapfish.org. I will put the, the, the URLs in the very end so you can um, maybe go and have a look. Um, it shows just some simple application you can do with it. So you can uh, have information about some features, about factor features. Um, you have uh, editing tools. Um, you can implement the search tool. You can print. Uh, Mapfish print is one of the major uh, components. Um, yeah, so you can, with the editing, you can insert like uh, the attributes. You can have drop downs, etc. So yeah, that's uh, the state of of Mapfish.org. Um, in between, uh, there was some time um, passing, and uh, we, we developed further application with that framework, and we, we Im integrated other, other components. We, uh, yeah, we did some implementations, and among those, it's there's the Mapfish Web GIS, also known as C2C GeoPortal. Um, and um, this one is, is kind of interesting because it's plugin based. It's not a framework anymore. It's a full web GIS. And uh, 
you can choose your tools, what you want to use, what you want, how you want to arrange your tools, etc. So I'll go a little bit into that one. Um, so as I said, it's a generic web GIS. Um, it's plugin based. It's adaptable and extensible, so you can write your own plugins. Um, there are a lot of tools available, and um, there's a user group supporting that and uh, pushing that forward um, so uh, other tools get integrated, etc. So the architecture stays more or less the same, except that there's, um, there are some parts which got uh, developed a bit more, like the CGXP, it's a development from GeoX towards uh, more functionality. Um, there was there's the center, center touch uh, we, we integrated as well, along with XJS for, for the mobile part. And uh, on, the, on the server side, we used mainly Python um, libraries and the Mapfish print. So how does it look like? One way it could look like if you're setting it, when you're setting it up, it's um, like this. So you have a panel on, on the left side. You have um, a theme. You can have a themes panel with different layers where you can arrange them. You can change the, 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 um, the order of the, of the layers. And uh, you can have other panels like the query or print the print tool, etc. on that side. Um, you have a lot of tools up on the, on the top panel. Um, and yeah, map, uh, some map tools around, uh, yeah, like changing background layers, etc. Yeah, so a lot of tools. I won't go into all of them because, uh, yeah, best you try it yourself or, um, yeah, you, you ask questions for a demo or something. So that's um, but I will talk about some <coughs> of them. So there's full text search. You can configure um, your search fields or, yeah, your search fields in, in from Post, post GIS, Postgres. And um, yeah, you can search for them. You get the results um, immediately afterwards. Yeah, if you want to do some more complex, uh, if you want to have some more information about uh, some features, you query them. You get the results from several uh, several layers. You can show them. You can select them. You can also export them to CSV. Um, yeah, or even you can do complex queries um, with uh, several combinations of attributes and spatial restrictions. So you, you select a layer, you, you choose how it should match if there should be everything combined and like the subset of this combination or if just one of those arguments should, should be respected. And there's also a profile plugin. Um, yeah, you can choose your your profile line, and then it, it shows the height profile. You can have an editing interface where you can add data to to your Postgres database, um, and add have the, the restrictions about some, some attributes, etc. And there's an API also included, so y you can integrate that in other pages, or you can, with, with your GeoPortal um, setup, you can give that to others, or, yeah. And there's a mobile, simplified mobile interface um, for small mobile devices. It, is, it works in general also on mobile, but if the device is too small, the simplified um, interface is like easier to, to handle. 
Yeah, so there are many, many examples already in use. Um, I would yeah, rec recommend you to, to have a look at them. At, at them. But um, of course, you can also do your own. It's open source. Um, yeah, just have a look at the GitHub page. Ha have a look at the do documentation. Um, try it out. Give feedback if you find something. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so I will just show some other implementations about the Mapfish project. There's, for example, map point uh, map .ch, um touristic application, um, which was made with the basic Mapfish framework, or like the map .geo.admin.ch from the Swiss Topo implementation um, where they are doing a redesign. Maybe you saw the presentation of Cedric Mule yesterday, I think. And uh, yeah, like a campus plan of, of the University of, of the Technical School of ha Lausanne or also time-related um, time data which is shown here um, between some time space you can animate that and uh, integrate that into your web web GIS so where are we going um, for the web for the mapfish web GIS we will um, have some features um, in the next time which will be coming up so we will integrate the snapping for editing we will add a routing based on OSRM and uh, yeah, integrate the time sli slider to have the, the time component in that web GIS. And um, we are working hard on a QGIS backend so you could configure your layers in QGIS, configure the st styling and then publish them to the, to the web GIS. And on the long run, um, we are looking forward to open layer three, integrating that into the into the web GIS as well. So yeah, I didn't. I was really fast. <laughs> Sorry for that. Um, but thanks for your attention. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, just uh, feel free to ask. Thank you very much. Questions? 15 minutes of them. Yeah. Um, I was interested to see the, the, the little bit about the time, the time thing. Yeah. And, and uh, could you tell us a little bit more about that? And also, when, when are you planning to, uh, to, to publish that time slider? So the, I should re repeat the question, I think. Yeah. OK. <laughs> so um, the question is about the time, the time component or the time slider, um, and wh when it will, it will, it will be. In, in implemented. So um, the time slider is based on the WMST um, specification, so we will uh, integrate that um, way of, uh, yeah, of publishing time. Um, so I think it, a first implementation will be like <coughs> towards the end of this year or the next uh, or the beginning of next year like the basic uh, implement implementation and then probably during the, the first half of the next year there will be the, the further on developments for for interaction I with it but I think it will it will be something similar to, to this application where you can choose your time your time <coughs> scale or <coughs> like the start time and the end time and then you can animate through it or you can slide through it. So this is already an existing feature? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Is it like a plugin? Um, <coughs> this one is based on the on the Mapfish framework so it's not yet like a, a plugin into the web GIS like the existing where the full fledged uh, yeah, the full functionality web GIS, but uh, yeah, I, we are trying to, we are going to integrate that 
into the Um, it, does the WebGIS also have a geostatistical plugin like, uh, yeah, like, it, like CalterWeb? Um, no. So in order to to show like, uh, yeah, like data and and visualize data with, yeah. Um, there, there are some plugins which uh, which exist, which are um, not yet in the in the in the main um, project, but which might get integrated because they have to get generalized uh, for the main project. But like you, you can you can select, uh, for example, a a, a data set and. Uh, one data and you get like statistics about how much uh, of one area and you get statistic how much uh, coverage is in that area and so on but it's in the beginning it's not yet uh, it's not as the core application is not like geostatistical visualization So um, what version of GeoX are we using and um, how will we contemplate to, um, about the fact that GeoX won't be integrating OpenLayer 3? So um, actually the CGXP is a, a deviation of GeoX, so we are not um, exactly using GeoX from it, but we, we got inspired by it and, and use it. like. Similarly to to CGX to TOX, um, but on the long run, when we are when we will integrate OpenLayer three, it will probably be with another library, so Bootstrap or I don't know, yeah. still to be defined. And which version of X are you using for this new release? Um, it's X three. Still X three. Yeah, so yeah. No, and probably. Yeah, probably never. We will stay on X3 and then make the jump to uh, open layer 3 with another library. Do you think that by using another library, uh, the, the end user applications can, be, can become lighter? And was that part of your... Yeah, so actually, um, why... So, yeah, in, in general, we will, we will stay for some time still on, on, the, on the X3 basis. But um, probably the reason why, one of the reasons why we, we consider going to another library is because uh, the cross device is handled uh, yeah, in easier or like it's, it's really one. There are a lot of libraries coming up which handle the cross device aspect. So uh, probably cross device is this yeah, the reason, but also like li lightening up and, and arranging, yeah, easing the, the usability. Sure, yeah. Uh, yeah. Just to, uh, uh, to add something, you have heard briefly above about the uh, GeoX structure. Uh, I mean, you did try that, now it has been tried that. So I was there. Oh, you were there, so yeah. you already know, I suppose, and that uh, there is mostly uh, switch to Angular. <laughs> Not yeah, it, but, it uh, depends. The implementation in, uh, in the uh, Swiss Seven Zero Portal is uh, already using Angular. Yes, maybe but uh, if, if we can continue, I don't know. If uh, we have plenty of time before. Yeah. Okay, it so it then the, the discussion yesterday was not conclusive at all. Uh, uh, different patients are going for uh, different with different libraries. So most likely, Terra Two will continue using. Boundless seems to be going today with uh, Bootstrap, perhaps with Angular, and we have the, uh, the PC 
Yeah, the this one this one is based on angle of bootstrap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true, but it's like it's going towards this direction. But for for like the web GIS, um, the Mapfish web GIS, we are not really um, we 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 wouldn't say yet that we are really taking this library. We, we we are still evaluating and probably it will be this one but maybe we could also stay with X it might be it come it depends also what what the needs are so you are camp to camp is the leading developer in this project and also from what I understand you have a major role in open ASD uh, are you coordinating If you are coordinated yeah. between Open Layer Three and and yeah. Mapfish, um, yes, yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, so well, with Open Layer Three, we we do a step further with with the developing. So we're breaking the API. So uh, when like the the web GIS implementations are kind of coming afterwards. So as soon as the API is fixed, we will, we will for sure change and, and go towards Open Layer 3. But yeah, it's not like one day after another. Yeah, okay.